evening, everyone. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. It's good to have you in the Lord's house tonight. Let's all stand together and let's sing this hymn, Are You Washed in the Blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. amen. Great, great singing. If you're washed in that blood, say amen. amen. So good to see you here tonight in the Lord's house. Much, much to pray about here on our Wednesday night prayer meeting. As we pray, let's continue to remember with Bobby Taylor and our prayers that God would give him a special touch. Also, let's keep Sherry in our prayers as well. Brother Kenneth Morris, as he continues his treatment for cancer. We want to pray for him. Brother Lewis Moy again has an appointment that will be coming up as it relates to cancer of his eye. We want to remember him. Uh, Brother Billy Kennedy's got some tests in January and getting an update on where things stand after his first round, complete round of chemo and radiation. So we want to pray for God's healing for him. Uh, Brother Tugwell, Cammie Chase, his uh, father, we want to continue to remember him in our prayers. Others battling physical needs, we want to pray for them. And certainly want to remember our young people. Uh, they'll be loading up tomorrow, heading off to the Mid-Atlantic Youth Conference there in Raleigh, how God has used that conference down through the years in the lives of hundreds, probably now literally thousands of young people that have made decisions at that conference. So we certainly want to pray for our young people for the conference that God would move in a mighty way. And those, again, just battling sickness, got a lot of folks dealing, whether it's with covid flu, different things like that that are going around. Again, the Lord knows all about praying for the sick and praying for our service. Now, as we go, Lord, in prayer, ask his blessing and asking God to be at these needs. Brother Timmy Dixon, if you don't mind, would you take us to the throne of grace? Amen and amen. You may be seated. Also, as you pray, continue to remember Miss Angelic early in your prayers. As you know, she had ACL surgery, recovering from that. We certainly want to continue to pray for her as well. Take a moment to look at your prayer sheet tonight, uh, uh, here this evening, as well as on the back side, some announcements to be in remembrance of. Don't forget, if you have yet to give your happy birthday Jesus Christmas offering, uh, this year's Christmas offering is going to uh, be a blessing to Nick and Candy Corlotta. They're in Moldova, a church project they have as it relates to the parking lot and exterior. Uh, please, if you have yet to give, please go ahead and do so uh, at this time. As we mentioned, Middle Atlantic Youth Conference, uh, young people will be loading up and heading out tomorrow. Uh, be coming back on Saturday. Please keep them in your prayers. I believe pullout time is at 1.30. So again, remember the young people as they travel up and there for the youth conference. Don't forget this coming Sunday is a fifth Sunday, and so everything we receive on Sunday, a.m. and p.m., unless designated otherwise, will go to the ministry of Mount Calvary 
Christian Academy. Uh, speaking of giving, on the back table, we have our tithing envelopes for 2024. Uh, if you have yet to pick those up, I encourage you to do that. Also, any end of the year giving uh, that you would like to contribute uh, needs to go ahead and be uh, turned in or marked uh, on the post stamp no later than December the 31st. So I encourage you to do that. And again, as we have mentioned here on the bulletin, I do pray everyone had a Merry Christmas. It's hard to believe Christmas is now in the rear view mirror and we are looking ahead to the last few days of 2023 again the beautiful poinsettias we're going to leave those up here through sunday night when sunday night service is over with you're welcome to grab yours and be able to carry those with you uh, but again thank you for beautifying the sanctuary and uh, just looking forward to closing out the year strong our theme this year in 23 has come from ezekiel 2230 on being the key in 23 and i pray all of us uh, just as we have illustrated so often like a key ring each key on this ring has its own individual functions. It opens certain doors that other keys cannot open. And I pray that this year, that your life has touched the lives that maybe no one else could touch. Maybe you're at the end of the year and you say, you know what, there's more I could do. Or maybe there was someone that I had on my mind and my heart and I was going to work on trying to invite them to church. And, and, and what, for whatever reason, you've not done it or not worked as hard. Listen, there's one more Sunday left in 2023. Last Sunday is the last Sunday of this year. So let's work hard, continue to be the key for Christ here in 23 as we close out the year. So please keep that in mind, if you will, in the next week as the Academy opens back up, we get back into our ball seasons. Got some ball games coming up on the 4th. I've got a home game with the boys taking on Calvary. Friday night the 5th, all four teams, I say all teams, three of the four teams, Pamlico doesn't have a JV girls team, but three of the teams will be heading to Pamlico. And then January and I have got some home games, varsity boys and girls against Heritage in Zebulon. So we'll be getting underway pretty quickly. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Amen. Friendly reminder from Brother Doug, from his lips to God's ears to our ears. Sunday school this coming Sunday. By the way, last Sunday school class of 2023. So maybe this year you've not been as faithful and maybe you've talked and said, you know, next year we need to get more faithful to Sunday school than what we were last year. But listen, not a better way to get it started for 24 than to finish out 23, right? So you come on out. I know Brother Doug is chomping at the bit. This rascal puts a lot of study in and of course by the nature of our services with cantata and the services past Sunday where we had communion and a living Christmas story. We've not had Sunday school the last two Sundays. So this rascal for three weeks has been building up the Sunday. He's about ready to pop. So let's get out of here and have a great Sunday school. Thank you for the reminder. Brother Douglas. Yes, sir. Okay, so so you Amen. He's fired up, so let's come on out and pack out Sunday school this coming Sunday. Again, thanks for being here. I'm excited about what God has for us tonight. Gives us a chance now to do some singing, also do some fellowship. Let's stand to our feet. What do you have for us, Brother Andrew? Let's all stand together one more time, and let's sing this hymn, There is Power in the Blood. Would you be free from the burden? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the prayer. Take one with those ones around us for a few minutes.
everybody's done fellowshipping. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's sing the second verse together. When there is power in the blood. Would you be wider, much wider than so? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. If you're thankful for that power in the blood, say amen. Well, we've come to that time in our service where we have an opportunity to worship the Lord in our giving. So may God bless both the gift and the giver as we pray. Lincoln, if you don't mind, would you ask the blessing of our offering? Amen. You may be seated. that great music. By the way, keep Brother Andrew in your prayers. Uh, he's going to be flying out tomorrow uh, heading to Arkansas, an opportunity to spend some time with Destiny and so uh, you certainly pray for him that he'll have traveling mercies and as he's flying that his arms won't get tired as he's flying away, but keep him, keep him in your prayers and uh, he'll have a great, great trip. As we uh, look at our prayer sheet tonight to go to the Lord in prayer, uh, you'll notice our ministry of the week is youth and certainly uh, we need to remember our young people, the world that we live in today, uh, frankly, is a very, very wicked world. There's a lot of peer pressure. The, the young people of America and around the world have a target on their back, and boy, we just need to pray for them, that God will put a hedge around them, that God will use those who have a hand in the pile of molding and shaping their life uh, to be able to minister and lead and guide them. Staff member of the week, Elena Rice. Let's remember Elena, the teachers right now are on a a little bit of a break here during Christmas. It'll be heading back the first of the year. Please remember Elena and Hunter both in your prayers. Of course, they'll be getting married in April. And I told them I'd throw this out there. They're currently looking at various housing options that are out there. And so I told them I'd put the word out. Uh, keep your ear to the ground. And if you know of any good housing opportunities, whether it is a purchase or whether it is a rent, I see them, let them know, as you know, uh, the more options you have, usually the better decisions that you can make on that. And so, again, I, I wanted to throw that out there for them, but keep her in your prayers. Home missionaries, Terry, Tammy Miller, there in Fort Collins, Colorado. I was reading uh, just a little newsletter from them today, uh, where here in 2023, they had 10 saved there in the ministry. We're able to see five of them follow the Lord in believers' baptism and uh, just trying to reach out and make a difference uh, where they are planted at as our missionaries. And so let's remember Terry and Tammy Miller. Four missionaries, again, Nick and Candy Corlotta, uh, missionaries to Moldova. Let's pray for them. Military personnel, Alex Velarde, 
college student, Michaela Hall, let's remember her uh, as she's in college there at Pitt, elected official Ted Budd, our U.S. Senator. We have a number of folks in the rest home, assisting living, as well as in the hospital with Brother Bobby, so let's pray for them. And then a number of names that are on the prayer sheet, just some others to, to mention as add-ons. Please remember Brother Bobby Acock was talking to Brother Andrew. Uh, he's been battling here in recent months many strokes. And matter of fact, had to go back in the hospital with some many strokes. So please remember Brother Bobby Acock. My sister Lisa uh, lives in West Virginia. Uh, she had a heart attack yesterday. I uh, was getting some things uh, checked out on that end, so please keep her in your prayers, if you will. Also, Brother Andy Hall, who heads up uh, our media ministry upstairs with the slides. He's under the weather this evening, so we want to remember Andy in our prayers. And again, like I said, all the different needs of our church family, I know that they certainly covet our prayers. Uh, we mentioned a number of names earlier, Anjali, Bobby Taylor, Sherry Taylor, Kenneth Lewis, Billy Kennedy, Brother Tugwell, all of these and those listed on the prayer sheet. Maybe there's a prayer request that's not been mentioned or not listed on the prayer sheet that you want to add. We can do that. Miss Rhonda? Absolutely, definitely let's add those to the prayer sheet and those needs. Anyone else? Right, left hand side have an add on? Yes, yes. And, and, and the name one more time. Douglas Heath, Douglas Heath okay. Y'all had to forgive me. I'm getting a little bit hard of hearing the older I get. Uh, so remember him in your prayers, Douglas Heath, if you will. Others, left or right, have any prayer requests that's maybe not on the prayer sheet? Yes, Miss Lynn? Yes. Definitely remember Miss Grace in our prayers. Yes, Brother Lewis. Brother Don, let's continue to keep him in our prayers. The Lord knows all about a lot of the needs he's facing in these days, but I know that certainly he and their family covet our prayers. Brother Don is somewhat of a private individual. Sometimes doesn't like folks to say a lot about him or mention about him, uh, but certainly please remember Brother Don in your prayers that God will be with him and give him a special touch. Anyone else, right or left-hand side, have a name to add on the prayer sheet that maybe is not listed or maybe has not been mentioned, right or left. I mean, to not simply say, Preacher, I've got an unspoken request. The Lord knows all about it. If you'll let that be known by an open hand. But let's go, Lord, in prayer again. Try to remember tonight as many of these requests as we can tonight as we pray. We'll ask this time, uh, Brother Bud Johnson, if you don't mind, would you lead us in prayer? And as Brother Bud's praying out loud, again, we have our prayer sheets here in front of us. And we can use that as a prayer guide to agree with him as he leads us in prayer. Brother Bud? Mm -hmm. Yes, God grant. Oh, help him. Yes, Jesus, please. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God, please. Oh, Father, give her strength, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, please. Amen and amen. I want to invite you to take your Bibles, turn to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms. Psalms 145 is where we're at this evening. Psalms 145 here in uh, recent weeks I've been reading through the Psalms and my devotions and boy what a blessing and encouragement to the heart that the Psalms are and 
Uh, here it's hard for me to believe tonight is the last Wednesday night of 2023. I feel like that I was just standing up here recently and saying, boy, this is the first Wednesday, and even joking, how many is here tonight? Everybody raise their hand, all right, you've been here, all of you are here tonight for the first Wednesday, and let's try to have perfect attendance all year long on Wednesday nights, and here we are, we're at the last Wednesday night of 2023, and yet, just as sure as I am that God had a message for us on the first Wednesday night of this year, I'm convinced that God has a message for us on the last Wednesday night of this year. Not only something that can help us over the next two or three days as we close out the year, but something I believe that can be a great help to us if the Lord spares its coming and we live to see next Monday what the Lord can do and help us with in 2024. And so Psalms 145, we're going to look at the first three verses, but pay very close attention to verse 3. The psalmist says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Let's pray. Father, again, I love you, and I do pray tonight that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, we have so many needs that make up the congregation of Mount Calvary Church, Lord. Lord, the beautiful thing is, is Lord, no matter how great the needs may be in our life, our God is greater. And there's nothing, Lord, that's too hard for you. Lord, there's nothing that escapes your attention. And Lord, it makes no difference what hour of the day it may be. It makes no difference on what day on the calendar it falls on. You're there. You're aware. You're able. And Lord, you're assisting. Lord, ministering to us even at times, Lord, where we don't even realize it. Lord, tonight I pray that you would take some of these truths that you've, Lord, laid on my heart and you've spoken to me about. And Lord, you'd use them to be a help to your people, Lord, here tonight. As we are on the, on the cusp of closing out, Lord, 2023, about to venture into a brand new year. So, Lord, again, speak to me and through me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, I, I got thinking about, as a kid growing up, there's a lot of things I enjoyed. But one of the things, and probably there's a lot of kids that this is true of, I used to love when I was... Uh, these guys age up here. I used to love magic trips. How many of y'all, when y'all were kids growing up, used to like the, a, a good magic trick? I, I, I used to love, first of all, card tricks. Man, I loved someone that could do some tricks with cards. Rather it was, all right, pick a card, any card, and they'd take the card out, and then uh, they'd say, okay, let me put it into the deck, and let me shuffle it up, and then I'm going to flip over the cards, and when I get to your card, I'm going to tell you, here's your card. And they flip it over and say, is this your card? And you're like, yeah, how'd you do that? And they say, well, you know, a musician never tells their secrets and, and all those neat things. And by the way, there are several ways to actually be able to do that. I'll give uh, that particular trick away. If you have a, a, a standard deck of cards that are brand new, you can take your thumb. And whenever you find that particular card, you can make a scratch mark across that wax card. And so by the feel of your fingers, when you're going through the cards, you can feel it right there on your thumb and you'll know exactly what card it is when you flip it over. You say, where did you learn that from? My dad was a gambler before he came to know Christ as his Savior. And so he taught me a lot of those different things. Uh, you know, I used to love to watch him take a deck of cards and he could let you shuffle them up and he could take them and he could flip over four aces anytime he wanted to when he was going through the deck and things like that. But I used to love to watch card tricks. I used to love to watch people take a coin and put it in their hand and make it quote unquote disappear. You know, really what they do is they take the coin, they put it between either these two fingers or these two fingers and close it up and a person can't see it and then they let it come back to their hand. Or they could slide it down their, their sleeve right here and then when they bring their hand back down, the coin pops back. But I used to love to watch them do that, maybe reach their hand and say, watch this, and they'd pull a quarter out of somebody's ear and hand it to them. So, yeah, I, I used to love to watch those things. And then one of the things that was always kind of neat that you'd watch the, the magicians do is how many of you have ever seen them where they reach down? Matter of fact, i got a picture of one of them do it, where they got the handkerchief up in their hand and they start pulling it out and it just keeps coming and coming and coming 
and coming and coming. It's like, man, where in the world? And then finally, sometimes tie at the end of the, of the handkerchief might be a pair of underwear or something like that. And everybody in the crowd will get a big laugh at them and, and all those good things. But, but the, the point of that trick was here it looked like you start off with just a little red handkerchief and then it just seems like it has no ending. It just keeps coming and coming. And, and I thought about that as I read Psalms 145. Verse number 3. Notice what the Bible says. David here, the man after God's own heart, King David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Psalms 145 verse 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And watch this very next statement. And his greatness is unsearchable. If you make it a practice of writing your Bibles, I want you to circle that word, unsearchable. Searchable. There's two key words or variances that appear in verse number three. We see the word great. Great. And then we see it again as greatly. And then we see it as greatness. So again, when we, what's one of the rules of scriptures? Anytime you see a word used over and over and over, there's an emphasis being made. And the emphasis about God that's being made is that he is great. You say, preacher, what does the word great mean? By definition, the word great means to be above all. Listen, that makes no difference who in this room that we talk about, whether it's the preacher, whether it's Brother Doug, Brother Timmy, Brother Bud, Brother Lewis. Listen, whoever it is, the Lord is great. He's above all of us. Fact is, if you put us all together in one big old barrel, if there was the ability to get all six, seven billion people on planet Earth all together in one big old space, and we were to channel all of our brains and all of our strength, it's kind of like that show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? How many ever used to watch that show of Regis Filming? You know, and you could call up, you know, phone a friend. Somebody that might be a quote-unquote expert that might can help you to answer a question. Phone a friend. Listen, if you had the ability to put our collaborate brains of the entire globe together, listen, God's above all of us times a million. He's great. The word great. And then there's the second word. It's found one time in the text. It's an interesting Hebrew word. It's the word un. Searchable. Again, if you write in your Bible, circle that word, unsearchable. The word unsearchable means past finding out. Matter of fact, this word in the Septuagint, that's the, the Hebrew version of the Old Testament or the Latin Vulgate translated it as this. Of his greatness, there is no end. You cannot find it like that scarf that the magician just keeps pulling out and pulling out and pulling out and pulling out and pulling out when it comes to the greatness of God. There is no end. So tonight as we close out 2023 and as we prepare for 2024, I'd like for us to consider this subject tonight, unending greatness. Unending ending greatness listen as we face a new year i am so grateful tonight using the word g-r-a-t-e-f-u-l grateful that we can take comfort and that we have a g-r-e-a-t a great god a god that's above all that is unending to you and i and the world in so many different categories. I want to give you tonight, just real quickly, I want to give you four unending gratefulnesses of God. that We can grab hold of tonight. We can grab hold of on these last four days or so of 2023. But you know what we can do? We can take it with us as we go into a brand new year. My dad used to say all the time, he said, boy, you know what? A good road man always carries a biscuit with him. A traveling man always has an extra biscuit in his pocket. So if he needs it, he's got it. Listen, I'm glad as we go into 2024, God give us, listen, an endless supply of biscuits, if you will, that we can carry with us that can help us as we go on this journey of unending greatness. Let me give you four things without end of our great God that we can carry with us, not only as we close out this year, 
but also carry with us into 2024. Let's look at them together. Number one, if you're taking notes, write this down. Write down this phrase, unending love. Unending love. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament in Romans chapter number 8, as he closes out this chapter, begins under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to, to write about the love of God. For sake of time, we'll put it up on the screen. Verse 35, there's a question that's given. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? In other words, listen, is there anything in this world that's big, that's bad, that's ugly, that's difficult, that's too high, or that's too deep? Listen, that will separate us from God's love for us. He says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword boy he gives a bunch of them there notice his answer in verse 36 he says it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter that means as we live on the journey of life guess what there's going to be some distress on the journey of life there's going to be some dark miles there's going to be some tribulation miss kennedy there, there's going to be sometimes when the doctors tell us hey listen somebody that we love has cancer there's going to be, listen, Brother Lewis, those moments when they come in twice this year to hear those words that nobody wants to hear. M M Mr. Moy, I'm sorry, but, but, but you've got cancer. Listen, on the journey of life, listen, somebody that we love is going to leave this world. On the journey of life, there's going to be difficulties and health problems and financial problems and, 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 and storms. Listen, as sheep for the slaughter. But notice verse 37. Nay, in all these things, though, we are more than conquerors. That means we can overcome. We can make it to see another day through him that loved us. And listen, not by having to endure it. But you know what? We can go through it and we can enjoy the journey. Why? How can I enjoy the journey when difficulties arise, when bad news is given? He gives us the answer in verse 38. He says, for I persuade that neither death, nor light, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here it is, Brother Justin. Here's the, here's the jewel. Yes, is there difficulties? You better believe it. Are there tears? Yes. Is there stress? Yes. Is there unknown? Yes. But through it all, God's love will walk it with us every step of the way. Amen. Aren't you glad no matter what happens, God's love never abandons us? Aren't you glad no matter what we do, God doesn't quit loving us? That's, that's a beautiful thought. To understand this, God doesn't love me, Miss Cindy, because I deserve his love. He loves me simply because God is love. Fact of the matter is, Brother Jimmy, there's a lot of times that God loves Frank Rice in spite of me, not because of me. Oh, what wonderful love to know as I go into this year. Listen, if everybody else in the world turns their back on me, God's still going to love me. Oh, listen, Janelle's talked about often as a child growing up, as a teenager, a very difficult home life. A mother that, being honest, was very abusive physically and verbally and took her life as, as Janelle was in the ninth grade in just a very difficult home life. And at times, listen, being in her room, listen, after being abused and facing difficulties and yet being able to curl up and put her arms and feel the Lord's arms around her saying, listen, Janelle, if no one else loves you, I love you and I will never abandon you. Listen, as you go into 2024, listen, you carry in your pocket the biscuit of knowing that there is an unending love that God has for you. Right. Oh, listen, and by the way, no matter what, he still loves me. I, I heard this story. It did a, such a good job of illustrating it. There was this little boy that was in a home, that, and this little boy was just very mischievous. It seemed like, listen, every time that you turned around, Brother Timmy, he was getting in trouble. I mean, rather than coming in late, not doing his chores, listen, uh, not being respectful, j just a, a rambunctious youngin that, that found himself getting in a lot of trouble. One particular day, he was up in his room, had like one of those two-story houses. He was up in his room throwing his baseball around in his bedroom. By the way, how many of y'all have ever told your quits, quit playing the ball in the house? Y'all ever said that? That's, 
Uh, I, I got told that a million times. Told my, quit playing with the boy in the house. And that particular day, that boy was throwing his baseball around, and, and he chunked it, and he ends up hitting this window and knocking the window out. Everybody in the house heard what happened. The father heard what was happening. The father, he could hear his dad's steps coming up the steps. His, not steps, could hear his feet coming up the steps. That boy just knew, listen, when he gets up here, he's going to kill me. He gets into the room, takes his belt off. The boy, listen, without even saying a thing, just assumed the position by the bed. <laughs> the father looked at his son. He said, son, no, no, no. The father did something that changed that little boy's life forever. That father literally took his shirt off with his bare back, he handed his son the belt. He said, son, listen, he said, what you've done is a seven-lick offense. He said, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to take this belt, and I want you to hit dad across the back seven times. His father, his boy looked at him, tears started well up, said, daddy, I can't. He said, son, I'm telling you. He said, right now, he said, I want you to hit me. Well, boy took that belt, he hit his father, barely touched him. He said, no, no, that don't count. He said, you need to hit me. That little boy with tears coming down his face took that belt across his dad's back. What? Two, three, four, five. Listen, he could hear the belt popping against that flesh. Six, seven. That little boy, tears just flowing down his face. His father looked at him. He said, son, he said, let me ask you a question. He said, when, those, when they took Jesus and they whipped him he said do you know who did it he said daddy it was, it was either i can't remember it might have been romans or jews he said no son he said it wasn't romans or jews that put jesus on the cross that whipped jesus with that cat of nine tails it was his heavenly father and he said jesus you know what his father had to do you and i had sinned against god but he took his son and his son took our punishment you know what today he said son I love you and today you know what daddy's done daddy has taken your punishment listen that changed that boy's life that day that didn't mean that that boy was perfect from that day forward or never got in trouble but you know what his life changed greatly he, he was a whole lot better young and because for the first time in his life he really was able to get a hold of a father's love for a son and all oh, you listen to me dear friends if God in heaven listen loved us so much that he would allow his son to suffer on Calvary for you and I there's nothing that can separate us from the love of our heavenly father listen it's an unending love but not only is it an unending love but let me give you the second biscuit to carry on the journey of the new year not only do we see unending love but we see unending mercy as we go into the new year not only can we take to the bank every single day no matter what God's gonna love me but also I can go into every single day knowing that God's mercy is gonna be brand new every day notice what Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 and 23 say we'll put it up on the screen it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because why his compassions fail not. Look in verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. If you've never underlined those verses in your Bible, you need to open it up and get them underlined and take them with you on the journey of life. Listen, as I go into this new year and finish out this year, not only can I take to the bank, Brother Bud, that God's going to love me every day, but every single day I can take to the bank that God's mercy is unending. Every day God's mercy is available to me. I'm glad for 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There is no ending. You know, there's a lot of things that we have in this world that there's an ending to it. It comes to an end. But God's mercy never ends. I was reminded of a story. I believe I've shared it with you before. I was probably eight, maybe nine years old, eight or nine years old, and how many of y'all remember when you could send in your, uh, uh, the little labels on the pins oil and you could turn, them, turn in so many of them you could get a rebate check in the mail? How many knows what I'm talking about? 
I remember one time that my dad had saved a bunch of those little serial number deals, sent them in, and in the mail there was a check that came in that had my name written on it. Lloyd Franklin Rice Jr. My dad's the senior, I'm the junior. And on that rebirth bank check, Brother Doug, it was for $10. Oh my goodness, you just will not know how excited I was. I promise you, 40 years ago, $10 was a big deal. Guess what? Can I tell you what? $10 is a big deal today, amen? And I was so excited. We went down to the post office in Mount Hope. It had come in. He handed it over to me. He said, here, son, open this up. And I opened it up, and there it was, a $10 check in my name. Uh, we went up to the Crossroads Mall, went into, no, it wasn't the Crossroads, went up to the Raleigh Mall, Raleigh Mall, went into the Raleigh Mall, and there was a Montgomery Wards. How many of y'all have ever done shopping at Montgomery Wards? Huh? Went into the Montgomery Wards. Well, the mall entrance, when you walk to the Montgomery Wards and start walking down the mall, the very first store on the left was an arcade. And I thought, you know, I would love to go in that arcade. So I went to my dad, I said, Dad, do you suppose that maybe I could get this check cut and, and I'll go in there and maybe just spend, I don't know, maybe a dollar or less in the arcade. What do you think, Dad? He said, okay. He said, you know, if you want to go spend maybe a, a few quarters at that time, you could play a game at the arcade for 25 cents. You know, go in there, maybe play a couple games, okay? But understand this, when that $10 is gone, it's gone. So don't you go in there wasting all that money. It's all right. Yeah, well, I won't. So here I go. Go up there to the little person at the Montgomery Ward counter, sign the back of it. They gave me a fresh, brand new $10 bill. Pop, pop, pop. I'm just so excited. So I walk into the arcade. I go up there to the counter. I said, ma'am, can I, can I get some change for a $10? Okay. So she gave me a five, four ones, four quarters. I go over to the first game. I can't remember what it was that I decided to play, and I put in that quarter, and I'm playing, you know, all this. Good. And all of a sudden, it was one of those games that if you wanted to keep playing after a while, you had to put another quarter in because it was on timeout. So I popped that other quarter in. Boom. I'm doing good. Get ready to timeout. Got to put another quarter. Yeah. One quarter turns into two, turn, two turns into three, three into four. And they have these little changing machines where you can go and feed the little dollar bill in there and it'll drop out the quarters. And one dollar turn into two, two turn into four, four turn into six and eight, and y'all could about figure it out. I blew all ten dollars in that arc. Oh, I walked out of the arcade. And all I'm thinking is when my father finds out, he is going to kill me. So I go in. He can see, read my face. He has known what I have done. How many of y'all know by just looking at your kids? That not a, you, you know what's going on. All right, so see the face, go in there. He said, you know, I got thinking, son, on the way home, maybe we could stop off there at the Bradley Market. And you know how they have that nice little slushy machine that's got the real nice slushies where you can get the Slurpees? Maybe we could go by there and get a big old slushy. You know, those things are only at that time, maybe 50 cents. And you know, get one of those. And then maybe get a big old bag of popcorn while we're there. And yeah, yeah. And then maybe on the way home, there on the bypass, you know where the burger villa is at? How they have those big old ice cream cones. They have the chocolate and vanilla swirl. I mean, you know, it's about this. We can stop by there. And maybe you could, you know, I, I, you, you could probably spend a dollar. You still have eight dollars left over. Don't that sound like a great idea, son? Mm, oh, yeah. So finally, I had to come out with it that I had burnt all that money up. He said, What'd your dad do? I'll tell you what he did. He let me suffer. Boy, we go by the, wouldn't it be great to stop in here? Oh, you don't have any money. <laughs> we go by there, pull in the parking lot. Oh, boy, that popcorn sure would taste awful good, wouldn't it, Frankie, right now? Pulled out of the parking lot, kept on rolling. 
We went by the bypass where the Burger Villa was at, pulled in the parking lot. Boy, look at that boy walking across there with that ice cream cone that's got that swirl on top. Don't that look awful good, son? Wouldn't you like to have one of those? But I'm sorry about that. You done spent that money. Oh, listen, this went on for probably a week. It was tough. You know what? He was trying to teach me a lesson about A, being tight with your money, and B, that listen, when it comes to those kind of things, there's an end to it. But I'm here to tell you something wonderful tonight. I'm glad that when it comes to God's mercy, there's no end. Amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of times that God should have turned the spigot off on Frank Rice's mercy and said, listen, all right, buddy, I've showed you enough mercy and enough grace already. You know, you're going to get what, no, no. Aren't you glad that God doesn't throw, throw in the towel like that? Aren't you glad that his mercy is new every morning you wake up and God's got another $10 rebate check of mercy right there laying on the dresser say it's available for you to use today because I know that you're going to need it. Listen, there's unending love. There's unending mercy. Let me give you the third one. I need to be quick. Number three, listen, there's unending grace. Listen, mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. When I think about the grace of God, I think about our lost loved ones. How many of you here tonight have somebody that you love, that you care about, that, you, again, you're not trying to be God. But you know by the fruits that they bear that you have real doubts if they died, they'd go to heaven. How many know some folks like that? People you love. But you're just, listen, by the fruit, they're on their way to hell and your heart's broken and, and, and maybe in the past you prayed for them. How many of you would be so honest that there's some people in your mind that you've even wondered, I don't know if they're ever going to get right with God. How many said, I, I've been there before. I'm, I'm going to be honest about it. I've been there before. But I just want to give you tonight some, something to carry in your pocket a biscuit as you go into 2024 don't ever give up on your loved ones listen God's not going to give up on them God will keep working on them God will keep dealing you keep talking on them you keep praying for them you keep inviting them to church you keep looking for opportunities to share with them the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ because his grace is unending as long as there's breath in their body there's still hope. There's unending grace. Let me give you this and we're done. There's unending love, unending mercy, unending grace. Finally, there's unending strength. Unending strength. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Listen, sometimes life gets very difficult. For some of you here listening to the sound of my voice, 2023 has been a tough year for you. You faced some things that you never dreamed that you'd face. You thought it would happen to everyone else, but you never considered that it was going to come to your house. And no doubt this year at times you have found difficulties. And for some of us here tonight, 2024 could be the most difficult year of our life. But may I remind us as we close out the year and as we begin a brand new year that the strength of God to get us through, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. It is unending. His strength is available every single day. His strength is there. May I beg and plead and cry with you tonight with the voice of Almighty God as you face difficulties, trials, and tribulations. Make up your mind by the grace of God. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to stay in there. Listen, I, in the journey, there's difficulties. In the journey, it gets tough. Make up your mind tonight by God's grace. I will not quit and his strength will be there to see us through you know I, I begin to think about different people organizations that I'm I, I guarantee you if you if you talk to them later on that they'll tell you I'm glad I didn't quit you know l let me give you some examples of not giving up we'll throw the first picture up on the screen who can tell me what that is that's a coca-cola bottle amen how many of y'all like coca-cola hold your hands up how many's enjoyed ever having a Coca-Cola? How many's ever put some peanuts in a Coca-Cola? Boy, I got some folks getting excited. I thought Brother Doug was going to get up and wave the holy hanky. But, get, but watch this. Do you realize that during the very first year of Coca-Cola's existence, 
that they only sold 400 bottles of Coca-Cola in its first year. Only 400 bottles. Could you imagine if the CEO of that company, Gwen, would have said, you know what, this, I, I, this probably just isn't going to work. We're just going to take it off the shelf. You know what, they, they stayed with it. They, they stayed the course. They, 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 they continued to persevere. And, of course, we know the story, one of the most popular salt drinks, franchises in all the world. You know what? They didn't quit. Listen, they, they had every reason to quit. You sell 400 bottles around the world, it'd be real tempting to throw up the towel. What are you saying? I'm telling you tonight, on the journey of life, difficulties come. Don't quit. Stay the course. Let me show you another picture I'll throw up on the screen. Anybody know who this fella is by chance? MJ, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Who can tell me where Michael, what town he played high school basketball in? Wilmington, North Carolina. Can anybody tell me what happened to Michael when he was in the 10th grade? He didn't make the team. He, didn't make the team. he got cut. Coach said, you're not good enough. <laughs> Work harder and come back and try again next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah stay coach. Could, could you imagine for just a moment for folks that are Tar Heel fans like myself or folks that followed the NBA during that era, you know, when they still, in my opinion, played team basketball in those days, what, what basketball would have been like if Michael Jordan after his second year, when, when the going got tough and the coach said, you're not good enough, cut you from the team, if he just threw up his hand, so I just quit, I'm just not good enough. No, he stayed with it. Listen, he persevered. He stayed the course and he went on to become, in my opinion, the greatest player that ever played professional basketball. Why? Listen, because he didn't quit. He stayed the course. Let me show you a third thing up on the screen. I'm trying to illustrate something. Who can tell me what that is up there? The Cat in the Hat. Written by who? Who can tell me who wrote that? It's on the book. Dr. Seuss. Let me give you a little... Jeopardy trigger. Uh, what? How, does anyone know how many different publications, publishers, they sent the books to and got rejected before it ever got published? Does anybody know? 23 publishers received the transcripts from Dr. Seuss and said, you know what? We're not interested. It's not good enough. It made it to the 24th publisher. He said, well, we like this. We're going to give it a shot. And today, probably the most famous children's books out there, bar none. 23 times he could have said, well, you know, this is just isn't good enough and could have quit, but he stayed with it. Don't give up. Let me give you a fourth one real quick. I'm, I'm, stay with me. Anybody know who this fella is? Uh, Bambino, Babe Ruth. You realize there was a time in Major League Baseball history that this guy struck out more times than anybody in Major League Baseball history. Struck out more times than anyone. You know what? What if he just said, you know what? I just can't hit the ball. I'm just going to quit. But you know what? He stayed with it. He went on. When he left the game, he had hit more home runs in the regular season, single season than anyone had, and had hit more home runs for his career than anybody in all of Major League Baseball history until Henry Aaron broke his, his all-time record and then when uh, oh my goodness the Yankees hit 61 whatever is Maris Roger Maris got 61 and, and, and broke his record but it goes down as one of the greatest baseball players of all time listen he could have certainly thrown up his hands and said boy I just can't hit the ball but he stayed with it and he didn't quit folks what are you saying here's what I'm telling you 2024 who knows what's coming those we pointed out some folks who have experienced cancer and some hardships in their life. Listen, they could have never dreamed on the last Wednesday of last year what they were going to face this year. But you know what? God's strength has been there every step of the way. God's love has been there. God's mercy has been there. God's grace has been there. And they stayed the course. Listen, don't quit. Because his greatness is unending. It's new every day. Unending greatness. Take these biscuits with you on the journey of life in 2024. Let's bow for prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's looking around. How many is here tonight? You just simply say, Preacher, I want you to pray for me. You know, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what I'm going to face. But, Preacher, 
I want to carry these things with me in my life and I want to stay the course and I want to be everything that God wants me to be. Would you keep me in your prayers? If that's you, hold your hands up high all around the room. That is my heart's desire. God knows my heart. Remember me. Now, Father, you've seen our hands. You know our hearts. Lord, there may be some here tonight that's struggling, some that feel the weight of the world on their shoulders, some that, though they maybe have never verbalized at times, have just felt like, Lord, throwing their hands up and just quitting. Maybe tonight they just want to come and talk to you about what they're facing. Lord, maybe lay their burden one more time at Jesus' feet. Whatever the need is, Lord, may they take it to you and may your unending greatness minister to their hearts this evening. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Some are already praying. Miss Rachel's going to play at the piano. God spoke to your heart tonight. The altars are open. You just mind the Lord as she plays through a verse of invitation. Unending greatness. Oh Lord, tonight, thank you, Lord, that everything we need is in unlimited supply. Lord, probably every one of us here tonight can identify with what it's like to go to the grocery store and there are some ingredients, something that we need, and we go to two or three different places and just can't find it. It, it, it it's sold out everywhere. Lord, we walk away dis disappointed because we're not able to, to cook or make, Lord, whatever we're wanting to have. But, but, Lord, there's nothing that you offer us that while there's breath in our body, Lord, it's not going to be there in unlimited supply to minister to us. Lord, help us to praise you for that. Also, Lord, help us to hold on to that as we close out this year and begin anew. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Unending greatness. Thank you for being here. Please keep in mind all the announcements. Please say a special prayer for our young people leaving out tomorrow, I believe about 1.30. They'll be at the youth conference tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. Pray that God will do great things in our hearts and lives. Come back Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Work on somebody. Last Sunday of the year, you can talk to them and say, listen, close out the year in God's house with me on Sunday. Do that if you will. Let's go on in prayer. Be dismissed as we close out in a word of prayer tonight. Go ask it this time. Let's see here. Brother Christopher Brown, if you don't mind, would you dismiss us in prayer?